Hey guys, I'm Chris with another fantastic chemistry video. And today, we're going to learn about stability of cycloalkanes. Now, this is where things I think really get interesting. Um, it's really kind of cool how all this works. So, my advice pay close attention because this is pretty cool. Obviously, when your faculty member is saying that something is really cool to them, it's probably going to be on your test, right? Five and six member rings are the most common in nature. We'll figure out why today. Okay, we'll figure out why. Obviously, there must be something special about them if they're the most common found in nature. Carbons, carbons and of this, you know, of alkanes, of course, are sp3 hybridized, and they love that bond angle right there. Carbon loves that bond angle. Keep that in mind. 109.5. If it's sp3 hybridized, they kind of go hand in hand. When a cycloalkane has an angle other than 109.5. It will not be optimum. It will not be optimum. Okay, it'll have poor overlap. And that is what is called angle strain. Angle strain. Okay, very important. Now, it's also known as Bayer strain in honor of Adolf von Bayer, who first explained this phenomenon. So he noticed it, he noticed what was going on, and he described it for us. He, he must have called it angle strain, and then other chemists more than likely gave it his name because out of respect for his accomplishment or his for his observation. And then there's this thing called torsional strain that arises when bonds are eclipsing. Okay? So when bonds are eclipsing, you're getting what's called torsional strain because remember, when they're eclipsing, they kind of want to rotate out of the eclipse, right, to minimize their electron repulsion. So if you're being forced to be in this confirmation, you're trying to twist the whole time, okay? You're trying to twist yourself out of that confirmation, putting a lot of strain onto a ring. Keep that in mind. Angle strain. Cyclopropane is where we talk about angle strain. Cyclopropane is where we talk about it. Now here is a skeletal formula of cyclopropane. And cyclopropane really does form an equilateral triangle. The bond angle is 60 degrees. Now remember... SB3 carbon wants to be 109.5. And here, cyclopropane is being forced to be 60 degrees. That causes these orbitals to overlap very poorly. That You're getting more of a, I mean, I'm not going to call it a pi bond because it's not, but you're getting more of a pi bond phenomenon where you're getting just very little over orbital overlap making this bond weaker. Now, I didn't say it was a pi bond. It's not a pi bond. It's a sigma bond. But as you can see, the Orbital overlap is very poor, making the bond very weak. And these are what are referred to as bent bonds. If I were to make you a molecular model of this, your model would literally bend to make this happen. Okay? It's not a good angle for this to be in. Now, that doesn't mean cyclopropane doesn't exist. Indeed, it does. I've made it myself. It does exist. Um, they're just very reactive, especially if you get them warm, they will fall apart. They'll keep them cold, they'll stay together. You know, they're going to minimize their movement. And here is a Newman projection of cyclopropane. Now, if you do it, look at this Newman projection right here. Look at these hydrogens right here and right here. They are totally eclipsed. They're completely eclipsing each other. And because you're in a ring system, the ring system will not accommodate bond rotation. So the bonds can't rotate. That means that these two hydrogens here are in these here, and even these ones, uh, these ones to here, they're all eclipsing each other. They're all fused, and they're eclipsing each other, causing severe torsional strain. Oh, sorry, angle strain. Pardon me, angle strain. Torsional strain. I said it right the first time. Causing severe torsional strain. Angle strain is the result of the angle inside the ring. This is torsional strain when hydrogens or whatever groups are being forced to be in the eclipse conformation. Okay? Torsional strain. They want to rotate out. They want to come out. They want to move out of that, not to be eclipsed, but they can't because they can't rotate. All right? And that's angle strain. Or, excuse me, I keep saying angle strain, guys. That's torsional strain. Torsional strain. Very, very important. Butane, cyclobutane. Here's another example of angle strain. As you can see here, the ideal angle, 109.5, is being compressed slightly. 19.5 degree angle compression to 90 degrees. Again, that's going to cause a little bit of the bond bending. If I were to make you a model, you would see the cyclobutane is bending slightly to accommodate these bonds. Here is the torsional strain of cyclobutane. As you can see, again, these hydrogens are forced to be in the eclipsed environment. And again, there's no rotation here. 
The bonds can't rotate because they're in a fused type ring system. So therefore, there's lots of torsional strain going on here. So three and four member rings both have torsional strain. They both have angle strain. And they're both very reactive. Now, cyclobutane has a little bit more what we call flexibility. Okay? It can slightly alter itself. What it does is it twists out of conformation or it folds out of conformation. So instead of being linear, it kind of tweaks a little bit. All right. Now, it doesn't help a lot, but it helps enough. Okay. Notice that when it does fold its conformation or it does fold its, its, um, its it fold itself, if you will, these hydrogens can come out of plane or, excuse me, come out of eclipsed. All right. So they're not as eclipsed as they were. Now, this doesn't really help the bond angle much. I mean, two degrees doesn't really help much. It actually makes it a little bit worse. Um, but it does get these hydrogens out of being eclipsed, and that's a good thing. So the take-home message here, first of all, is when molecules are, the bigger the ring gets, the more freedom of movement the ring gets. Okay? A three-membered ring is very rigid, doesn't have a lot of movement. A four-membered ring has just enough flexibility, just enough freedom of movement to allow this to occur, to allow the non-eclipsing to occur. That's a good thing. So five and six member rings and even and above will have much more freedom of movement. The ring can kind of undulate, if you will. All right. And we're going to see more of that. And it's all about getting the hydrogens or whatever groups out of the eclipse conformation. Cyclopentane. Here we go. Now, cyclopentane has a lot more freedom to move. In fact, it's sometimes referred to as the envelope conformation. The, what the point of the, of the cyclopentane ring will pucker up. If you can imagine a, an envelope puckering up slightly, the, the lip of the envelope or the, the ceiling part, the part that you lick and push down. Okay. Now here's the Newman projection. As you can see, these hydrogens now are much more favored. They're much more in the anti-type orientation, which is good. Helps relieve torsional strain which is, you know, also called ring strain. Ring strain, angle strain, all that stuff all kind of goes together. This is why it's important, because they alleviate that strain. six member ring, cyclohexane. Now, here we're going to talk a lot about this. I'm going to introduce it here, and I'm actually going to give it its own video. All right? The six member ring has a much more freedom of movement than any other, than the rings that we talked about so far. Three, four, and five. Five has some flexibility, but six really starts to show flexibility. A lot of freedom of movement in this ring. You'll adopt what's called the chair conformation. You're going, and you're going to have to know how to draw this. The chair conformation allows the hydrogens in the rings to be completely um, anti to each other. They are not eclipsing at all. So that's much better. It's a much better conformation to be in. And, in fact, cyclohexane is known to adopt this type of conformation known as the chair. All right. Now we're going to come back to this. We're going to give it its whole video by itself because it's that important. Okay. You're going to be expected to know how to draw a chair cyclohexane and you're going to, I'm going to show you how to do it and you're going, to, you're going to have to practice it to become really good at it. Okay. You never know when I'm going to ask you to do it. All right, guys. So with that, I want to want, I want to leave this video here. I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon.